Thank you for clicking on the video. Welcome back to the channel. This is another review for The Real Housewives of Potomac. Season 6, Episode 8, Talk to the Braids. Um, I do apologize for the lawn man outside. I was going to try to wait until like he was going to let up, but he ain't letting up, and I got to get this done. <laughs> We're going out of town tomorrow, and so <clears throat> I had to get the work done so that it wouldn't be waiting on me when I got back because Potomac will be waiting when I get back and so will American Horror Story. I'm going to give you guys episode 1 and 2. I, side note. I'm going to give you guys episode 1 and 2 like a re, or like a real review of it, not a recapped review um because that's two episodes and I'm not going to sit here and regurgitate <laughs> two whole episodes that y'all have probably already seen. And if you haven't, you know Tune in. Tune in. American Horror Story is good, and I feel like it's going to be good this season. But um, I'm going to give you guys that after this. Let's get into this, okay? All right, so Giselle picking up her face off the floor. Um, they, they're, Everybody is just like, ooh, that was a lot. <laughs> you know, Wendy had, had just finished, you know, clearing the room. And so it's the aftermath, and... Um, they waiting on food. You, Giselle says she hungry now. Robin don't understand what went wrong. You know, she drunk and talking to herself. She don't understand what went wrong. She don't, she don't understand why Wendy is this angry. But why don't you understand? Anyway, um, everybody has, you know, they everybody has dispersed or whatever. And the tension is thick um, while they're eating. And so Wendy is just like, you know what? Okay, I'm, I think I'm full. I think I'm good. I think it's time to go. Karen say, let's just pack us a, you know, a little doggy bag and head on back to the cottage. The minute that they leave, of course, Giselle, you know, she now she has something to say. She and Robin, like I said, they don't understand why Wendy is this upset. Giselle is, no, Robin is like, I mean, she there could have been two other ways that she could have handled this. And it's like, yeah, but okay. <laughs> she handled it this way. This was one of the two ways, and this is how she chose to handle it. That's just that's just that, Robin. Um, I don't I don't understand Robin interjecting into somebody's full argument and then not understanding when somebody when that person, you know, who is already angered turns it on to you. Because, I mean, that's just how it goes. You already mad. Anything somebody else says <laughs> that ain't in agreement with you, you're going to be mad. You know, it's going to be a trigger. And so, yeah, I don't I don't. Why don't you get that? I, why don't why don't you get that? Um, Giselle is saying if she can't handle a few questions, you know, maybe then she's just not the girl for this group. Maybe she needs to find another group. It's just always that with her. Candace comes to her defense, and Candace is Candace is like, no, 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 that's not the way to go. <laughs> like that's not the option. Um, you guys were being me, and so that's what you got. You know, she's like Eddie has to be a sore subject for her he has that that is her trigger and that's what happened um Giselle talking about she probably over there at the cottage right now over there crying and she was <laughs> she was sure enough she was she was over there you know mommy's a good man and a good father and a good husband and it's just like mm. oh uh, uh. She just don't get it. She just don't get it. <laughs> She'll understand. Don't be don't be coming for her man. That's a good man. And he's a good man, Savannah. She ain't like that. She was over there crying though. Um Wendy though is very disappointed in Robin. She's disappointed. She says she's so, so, so disappointed in Robin because she thought that she and Robin were cool and she she finds that Robin will always come to Giselle's defense right wrong or indifferent and um Ascala notices that as well um <sighs> oh Ascala had a confessional and she looks so pretty red is her color like reds and pinks and you know yeah magenta mauve if you will um burgundy I know burgundy would probably look really good on her but yeah that's her color that's her color um, she looked good in her confessional. In her, in her confessional, she was saying that 
Robin, um, she's she's noticing that Robin, yeah, like I said, you know, will come to Giselle's defense at the drop of a hat. Or is it at the drop of a dime? <laughs> or is it either one? <laughs> is that little phrase interchangeable? Like I feel like I feel like I've heard both. Anyway, she um she she doesn't understand that, but but then again, may, is that just being a good friend, you know, coming to your friend's defense, never rebuking them in front of the people, but always behind closed doors? No, no, you need to be rebuking her right there where she did the, <laughs> where she made the offense. Don't wait, don't, don't have her back in those moments. And then behind closed doors, you over there like, girl, you probably shouldn't have did all of that. And you probably should No, nah, because the time to say it was then. That's how people, re that's how people, you know, will stop saying that y'all are one brain, Giselle's brain. <laughs> and that you don't use your own head and that you're up her ass. Um, so unless you want, I guess, I guess you don't care about that. I guess you don't care about that. She say, that's my friend and I'm going to have, I'm, I'm going to stick beside her. She going to stick beside her. Um, okay. The next morning, Robin calls Juan. He answers. He always answers on the phone. Like, why are you calling me? <laughs> I know you filming. Don't call me. Why are you doing that? Cause if you call me, why are you doing that? Then you probably on some bullshit. And so don't call me. That's how he be answering the phone. But he was getting a, um, he was at the barbershop getting the line up. And she called and talking about, you miss me? You miss me not being there? He like, we miss you, Robin. <laughs> he waking the kids up on time. You know, he doing all the things she wasn't doing. Um, but he rushes her off the phone because he's getting the line up. Okay, Karen, she's um, being sworn in. And so she's getting ready. You know, she has her makeup artist coming over to do her makeup. She calls Candace to see if it's okay that she... That the makeup artist, you know, and, and, and her go over there to the, to the, I don't want to call it the big house, but the estate house to do the makeup. And Candace is, is, you know, perfectly fine with that. At the estate house, the ladies are out by the pool. Um, Giselle is in there doing her water aerobics. Wendy says that she'll be over shortly. She has CNN to film. <laughs> and so we see her do that. And it's like, and y'all said this lady lacks substance. Not so. <laughs> Not so. Um, the rest of the ladies that are at the um, at the uh, estate house, because <laughs> I keep wanting to say big house, and that ain't the big house. Like, we're not going to say that. Um, they're all, you know, outside at the pool chatting about the night before. A scholar tells Giselle, you started the shit, and Giselle's like, not me. Not me. Like, I, it was Ashley, and, and I'm just getting blamed for everything. No, it was you. You and Ashley decided beforehand that Ashley would be the one to bring her the bullshit. <laughs> and when she did it, and then when she went out there, Giselle was the main one. Ashley has something to say. Let her say what she has to say. I bet. I bet. Because y'all done already got in cahoots. And that's why you, you know, let it, let it ride. Let it ride, y'all. Because I want her to, <laughs> I want her to go in there and drop that bomb. You know, that, that's what that was about. She don't understand why she's getting blamed. Girl, whatever. Um, she's such a girl, you a liar. <laughs> Ashley, uh, oh, Ashley, back back over there where she at. She get a push gift, blah, blah, blah. Um, back at the pool. Rob and Giselle, uh, Robin and Giselle, they trying to, you know, paint themselves like they're the victims. It's like, it's very much. She attacked us. Wendy attacked us. Like, I don't, we don't understand why she came in so hot. Like, she came in guns a-blazing. And we just, we just were trying to come to an understanding. We were trying to gain an understanding as to what happened. What was the rumor? The rumor that you both, <laughs> I'm not even, I'm not even going to do this with them. They both, all, they love to do this. It's always throw a rock, hide your hands. It's always... I was just trying to talk. I was just asking a question. That's Robin's favorite thing to say. I was just asking a question. Bitch, your question gonna get you slapped. I don't care about your question. You're not entitled to... Okay, granted, you're entitled to ask people questions. But when it relates my family, my husband, my kids, my, my personal life, you need to mind your business. You need to mind your business. Just like she wanted Ashley... To mind her business in that first season when Ashley was on her neck about Juan, she and Juan's relationship. Yeah, you need to mind your business. I mean, she ran up to the lady job. 
her and Giselle, like she was ready to fight, running up on Ashley about Ashley, you know, running off at the mouth about she and Juan. And so it's the same thing, girl. It's the same thing. Robin get on my nerves. Um, Scarlett tells Robin, you know, that she she tells her, I listen, I observed that you, you know, you taking sides and you jump into Giselle's defense. You know, that's I, I observed that. Giselle says that, you know, she and Robin think for themselves. And Robin, she, sh I'm shady. I'm shady as hell. And Robin calls me out on it. When? Where about? Because we won't be seeing it. Um, They feel like it's just a rumor. You know, it's just, uh, again, Robin, <laughs> you can't, like, you were really upset about just a rumor. You wanted to fight over just a rumor. So you of all people should understand, but you're trying to say, I I I get it's rumors around about my, my relationship all the time. I don't. I choose not to care. You're a liar. <laughs> you're a liar. But okay. Um Wendy shows up, you know, and Giselle looking, she got the look on her face like But she she speaks, you look nice. And whenever you want to talk, I'm here to talk, okay? Whenever. Wendy's like playing with her braids. Girl. She paid her this. <laughs> Don't talk to me, okay? Talk to the braids. <laughs> Don't talk to me. Talk to the braids. Um, Giselle talking about some. I, I want to talk to you, not your braids. Not your braids. I'm, I'm, I want to talk to you. No, she don't want to talk to you. Calling her childish and all of that. Okay, well, let it be. I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> so if that's childish, then I'm a kid. <laughs> I mean, because I don't want to talk to you. Um, they changed the subject, you know, the childbirth, whatever. And Mia says that her first, her first childbirth, her husband, well, her first husband, he didn't, he wasn't there. And, um, he would, he was at over there at the bar across the street. But then when he did show up, he brought his PlayStation all day. It was, it was, it was a little bonding moment, um, uh, mainly for she and Robin. Cause Robin can relate. Um, when she gave birth to her firstborn, Juan wasn't there cause they was, you know, beefing. And so... She understands that. She says in her confessional that having another baby, it, you know, could redeem Juan. It's, a, it's an opportunity for him to redeem himself. Enough. Enough, Robin. Enough. <sighs> they want to play a game. So Candace says, okay, I need um, some extras for my video. And so Robin, Giselle, and um, Mia, y'all in the group, and Escala and Wendy, y'all in the group. And Karen says she's just going to watch, but Karen ends up participating. Um, you know, it's cute. It's a cute little moment. It's fun, you know, whatever. Um, Karen ends up winning the whole little thing. Um, they, of course, they're dancing to Candace's song, Drive Back, whom she has dedicated to her husband. She says, you know, she gonna, he, he going to have her drive back. They might argue, go through whatever they go through, but she going to always drive back home. Um, and she says everybody in the group can, you know, can attest to that in some way, in some way, you know. Um, Giselle has driven back to Jamal on occasion. We know Karen driving back to Ray. Um, Robin, you know, we she driving back to, to Juan, and, and, and I'm sure she has in the past. Ashley stay in reverse because <laughs> he stay doing some shit for her to have to forgive. Um, but, yeah, it's a cute little, cute little scene, I guess. Um, while... Karen, Mia, and Wendy, they finna go to Siri. So while they go to Siri, the rest of the ladies say, okay, let's go out there and play tennis. Um, they play. Candace can't play. Ascala can't play. But Wendy and Robin look like they've been, you know, doing lessons. You know, they can play a little bit. And so they win. And the bet is the loser has to rub the winner's feet. Ascala and Candace are like me. Girl, ain't nobody rubbing them feet. <laughs> it's not happening. So we just gonna pour some water in between the toes, you know, how you like that. Nice little warm, cool foot bath. <laughs> warm, cool. I meant to say nice, ice cold foot bath. Um, while they're out there talking, uh, you know, now we talking about Wendy again. And Robin is just so upset that those bullets went to fly in her way. And so she feels like, it's like, it's just, I just find it funny that she was the loudest one in the room. And, 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 and you know, when, when they got engaged and, you know, and now, you know, she's singing a different tune. It's like they have a, she's saying that they had, they, their relationship is non-existent and all of that. And she's like, she feels like she's always felt that way. Like Robin ain't here for it. 
Candace calls both Giselle and Robin out on their bullshit. You know, like, no, y'all are some mean girls and y'all were on that green eye bandit bullshit that you always do. And so she caught catch. <laughs> Catch, she got it, she got it, and um, she went right to the source, you Giselle, and so yeah, and Robin, you was chiming in, so you got you know a beef by association, but whatever. Candace just wants them to all get along, and Robin, like, I know who not gonna, I know who's not invited to my wedding, I know who's not invited to my bridal shower or anything for that matter, girl, you not invited to that wedding. Hopefully, we ain't invited to that wedding. Nobody's invited, cause it's when is it happening? When is it happening? How are you going to be not inviting somebody to something you ain't put the first thing in stone? When is the wedding, Robin? Bridal shower and all. Girl, hey, girl, what? <laughs> she said that like the people are just dying to hang out with Robin. Not me. <laughs> not I. I, I. I wouldn't care. I wouldn't care. I'm pretty sure Wendy was laughing her ass off at home while watching this. Because, girl, don't nobody give a damn that they not invited to your whack-ass wedding and the whack-ass bridal shower. Don't nobody care. It's just, that's just going to be you and Giselle anyway. And maybe your lying sisters. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Girl, please. Why they don't do that? They should be doing. They should bring in a, a few of Giselle's line sisters in here. Let's see how they felt about her <laughs> back in the day. Cause I feel like she. I don't feel like the people liked her then and now. Um. Okay, so Candace. Um, she, I mean not Candace. Karen is sworn in in front of you know her small town, and I mean small. It's about three hundred people in the population, if that. <laughs> I ain't look it up or nothing like that, but I feel like it's I feel like it's very, 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 very small. But she has the support of her family there, you know, and Mia and um Wendy are there and she's sworn in. It's a nice moment. Happy, happy, happy. Congratulations to Karen. Um Rob, I mean not Robin, Ron what's the man name? Ray. <laughs> Ray goes up there, you know, he's like, Is the mic still on? And he go up there, give her, her flowers, and he's like, Oh yeah, tell him about that thing, remember? What? What, Ray? So she's like, oh, yeah, La Dame is expanding. We're going to be having lotions, slippers, perfumes. We're going to be having candles. We're going to be having all the home fragrances that you need. And Wendy is over there like, candles? I mean, she ain't mentioned them candles when we talk. She ain't have to. That's, that's the, that is the biggest misconception that people have when they know you. I don't got to tell you. <laughs> like, I don't got to tell you. Anything that I do, friend or no friend, I really don't have to tell you what my next move is because I may be one of the, like, I am one of them people. I don't want nobody speaking any negative. Not to say as a friend you would do that, but it's like, I just don't want it out in the atmosphere. If it's something very near and dear to me, I'm going to keep it close to the chest, you know, especially until it comes into fruition so that nothing, you know, derails it in any way. And it's just, you know, like, sometimes you just want to, you know, Keep it quiet until it's until the right time. And maybe not, that was the right time. Karen say, well, when we met, it wasn't even about me, you know. So why would I be talking about what I'm doing? <laughs> she came to me for advice on her candle line. I understand, Karen. I, but Karen moves like that anyway, though. But Wendy's just learning the hard way. <laughs> it is what it is. I mean, y'all can be a little cute competition. It's not that deep. We would buy Wendy's candles. We would buy... um. Uh, Karen's candles because the differentiation <laughs> is Wendy's is one wick and Karen's is three wick so it is what it is um, on their way out they stop at a 7-Eleven and Mia is just smit <laughs> she's just so excited to be going to the 7-Eleven like it's like an experience she's never had she's talking about uh, Gordon doesn't let her go into 7-Eleven maybe now girl but he ain't always been in your life. You ain't never been in no 7-Eleven. You came out of the foster care system. I know you been in a 7-Eleven. Girl, stop playing with me. <laughs> Gordon doesn't. I've, it was so exciting seeing the, the, the machine, the slurpy machine. Girl, get out of here. Stop making it. She really, girl, okay. That's like when Jennifer Williams over there on Basketball Wives was saying she ain't know what food stamps look like. You lying. <laughs> you lying, girl. 
Um, Mia tells Karen on the ride home, you know, that she appreciated seeing, you know, her loving family. It was very, you know, country down home. Like, she loved it. She was, she loved to see it. She loved to see it. Um, she switches gears, though, and she's like, you know, Giselle's gonna be at the dinner. How you feel about that? What? <laughs> I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Karen says she don't care. I mean, she ain't thinking about that. She said, because after all, like, when you guys left, like, it got worse. It got worse? Yeah, I mean, she said something about... If Wendy's going to be a weak bitch, then she shouldn't be in this group. Everybody's like, whoa, she said weak bitch. Well, that's how, that's how I interpreted it. <laughs> so she coming back telling, you know, uh, carrying the bone and then going to just tell the story how she want to tell it. <laughs> that's exactly how telephone works. Somebody going to mess it up. Eventually, they gonna just add in something or take something out. In this case, Mia added in a little. She added a little salt on it. <laughs> add a little bit on top. Um, but you know they're gonna they're gonna end up you know confronting the situation. Um, the ladies they getting dressed for dinner. No jeans, but of course we have to go over there to Giselle's room where she has on jeans and her midriff top, girl. <laughs> Anyway, um, my stomach growling. I hope y'all can't hear it. I'm home. I'm hangry at this point. Hangry. Um, okay, everybody fixes their plate. Of course, it's awkward still, but whatever. <laughs> we gonna all sit, a sit down. They done all took a shot of tequila, so. Okay. Um, Robin gets a FaceTime from Juan, and she answered the phone. Hey, my non-existent partner. Juan, like what no my non-existent partner did you know that we ha we're in a non-existent relationship and that you know like we're not really a couple it's non-existent all right whatever robin <laughs> he hang up <laughs> goop <laughs> it's a goop you really tried to be cute and it no it didn't really it didn't really go over well <laughs> um wendy of course she catches the shade and she addresses the situation she's like okay listen i I see where you're going with this. Um, if I happen to offend you yesterday, you know, when I was clearing the room, I do apologize because that wasn't my intention. Um, but Robin, you inserted yourself. Did Wendy go below the belt? Did Wendy like say some things that you probably, you and you don't want to hear from somebody you think is your friend? Cause Wendy was like, she kind of chopped her down. You know, it was very, it was very, <laughs> below the belt you know something something like you must have been holding that inside for a while waiting on mad day for you to be able to say that so that's how it came off but it was warranted because why are you piping up in a conversation where i'm talking to giselle you saying something and so now i got the chime you know i got the clap back so wendy was rightfully you know if she was warranted in her response it was just like what she said it was kind of like damn girl that's how you really feel because she could have just been like robin shut the fuck up <laughs> like she said shut up and eat that cracker and you know could have left it at that but she kind of went in a little bit you know like you don't even have a relationship that matters you don't even <laughs> you don't even have a relationship that's existed you know like she went in so i can see why robin is offended but still girl you brought it on yourself because you should have just sat back and ate your food that's the lesson. That's the lesson in all of this. Um, but she does apologize. Wendy apologizes. Robin says she ain't she ain't buying the apology, but okay. Girl, whatever. Don't nobody care. Um, Mia's like, okay, now that you got that squared away, you know, let's let's move on to your issues with Giselle. Like, do you guys want to talk about that? And um, Wendy's like, yes, you know what I do? I heard you call me a weak bitch. Giselle's like, who said that? Who said that? Everybody's saying, who said that? <laughs> Mia, you did. You did. <laughs> you said. you. I mean, I could have sworn I heard bitch. Everybody like, no. Nah. Candy says, now she ain't say all that. She ain't say all that. You got too much dip on your chip. <laughs> okay, we ain't, we ain't. She ain't say all that, but. That is how that is how Mia interpreted it. And that's how I did too. I mean, basically that's what you say. That's what you're saying. If you can't, if you ain't gonna have thick skin around this group, because we're gonna ask the hard questions, we're gonna get all up in your business. You can't get mad. Nah, I'm gonna get mad and I'm gonna bite your head off. <laughs> so that's just what that is. Giselle. 
She acted like, listen, this these are the rules over here in Potomac. We we drag you for all your with all your personal information, and you have to deal. <laughs> no, nah, girl. Um, that's it, Karen in the bag. <laughs> she did the dance. She did that. <laughs> she did that. Wendy, Wendy, Wendy got got Giselle's number. She got her number. She told her, listen, I mean, really, what you say really doesn't matter. In the nicest way that she could say, you're a non-factor. <laughs> like, whatever, what, what you say don't even matter. Giselle, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad. Girl, whatever. You press. You press. Because you really thought you was going to get to her. Not so. <laughs> um, that's where we end out. Let me hurry up and do this little review for... Um, American Horror Story. Be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. It's Call Me Busby, and I'll chat with you later. Peace and light. <laughs>